In the first years of the 18th century, this was the battleground of the battle of the succession of uh, Spain. Hundreds and thousands of people were killed here, and afterwards this became a zoological garden. And then the animals were brought in the 19th century away, and scientific institutes came here, like the Institut Pasteur over there, where now uh, Bavaria has its regional office, like the Bibliothèque Solvay or the museum, the Natural History Museum, where you have the first complete dinosaurs exposed, and the roof is done by Gustav Eiffel, Gustav Eiffel, when he was a young architect here, and the European Parliament just behind us, the Parliament with uh, nearly 800 members of Parliament and all together some 4,000 staff. The European Union, like every democracy, has uh, a legislative power, judiciary and an executive power. The law-making body, the legislative power, is in the hands of the European Parliament and the Council of Ministers over there. We see a corner where the presidents and heads of state and the national ministers and representatives of the 27 member countries do the work like a sort of Senate, a second chamber, to the work of the European Parliament. When you approach the European Parliament, there are three possibilities. One, the romantic way. We are taking it now through the park. A second, through the street, by car or bicycle, and a third, via the square Luxembourg. Members of the European Parliament have the right to invite nearly 100 people as visitor groups to the European Parliament. They arrive over here, and behind me you see the photo of the plenary and the president, the new president of the European Parliament, Martin Schulz. Most of the work of the European Parliament is done in Brussels, therefore we are here now. But 12 times a year, for three days, the European Parliament is in Strasbourg. It's an old concession to the very beginning, when Strasbourg was a symbol, and now most MEPs would like to stop the travelling to Strasbourg and to have concentrated all the work here in Brussels. When you go to the European Parliament, never go by car, there are no facilities for parking, and the cars who arrive there bring the MEPs from the airport or the train station to the main entrance and just behind me is something which symbolizes very much the European Parliament. You look through the windows, you see the kitchen and the restaurant. In most countries in the world where you have a parliament, there are bricks, there's a wall between you and inside and outside, but here transparency obliges. You see what they prepare, we'll see the dessert they are just preparing for uh, today lunchtime and there you see the restaurant and when they eat you see do they have good or bad eating habits. The European Parliament is very near to the city centre. The trees you saw over there are the trees around the Royal Palace. And not more far away than a kilometre was the old train station Luxembourg with the square de Luxembourg, Luxembourg Square. Where now, which is now the sort of living room of the European Parliament, a lot of bars and restaurants, where especially every Thursday it is named in another way, it's called uh, Flirt Square, because then more than 2,000 people are here to drink, to flirt, and to try to understand the others from the other countries. We are now approaching the European Parliament, the different buildings which are named after politicians who had forced forward the European idea. The train station linking Brussels to Luxembourg, Switzerland and uh, Milano Centrale is over there. Below us are the rails and this square is famous because a lot of public events are taking place here and just where I'm standing the acoustic is wonderful because a little bit like through the passerelle around us it is the acoustic like in a round church. We are now inside the main building of the European Parliament in Brussels, the Spinelli building, where you find on the ground floor most things which you need besides policy making, a gymnastic room, dry cleaners, supermarket, a kiosk, banks, a post office. But the most interesting is the third floor, where we will go now. It is an exception 
it is empty here because all people working here are in the moment in Strasbourg. Behind us is the Vox Box, where politicians are sitting, interviewed radio or television to explain what is happening here. We see over there an exhibition site, altogether 17 different exhibition sites are here. There a bar with metal chairs, which is the bar of the really intelligent people, because when you sit there, everyone sees you, you see everyone, the real place for doing networking. These are the post boxes of the nearly 800 members of parliament, and among them you find a lot of former presidents, former prime ministers, former ministers, but as well future ministers or future prime ministers. Two of them have now been nominated president, one in Estonia and one in Hungary. The corridors of the European Parliament are full of arts pieces and of political memories. Here, for example, is the charter, the original of the Charter of Fundamental Rights. This text, which defines what are the basic rights of all the citizens of the European Union. When the euro started, tons of national banknotes had to be recycled. They were cut in small pieces. And an artist from Lithuania made an installation out of about the equivalent of 50 million euro old banknotes to have a memory of those uh, different banknotes which we had before. This is the lobby of the European Parliament, just in front of the big chamber. And the lobby is dominated by a huge sculpture from a Belgian artist, Strebel, which is a sort of visualization of the theory of chaos. If you touch a little bit in a complicated structure, suddenly you see incredible consequences happening. One short shake and suddenly over there, over there, over there, it is much more movement. It's very difficult to predict what will shake if you touch in one specific place. Like political, social and economic reality, you do something, but you're not always 100% sure what will be the consequences. You are the basis of everything which is happening in democracy, therefore you have to walk always in the middle of the corridor. When you are president or prime minister one day, you might walk like this man over there, just beside the corridor, but as long as you are not a leading person in the decision-making process, always go in the middle of the corridor of a public building. I see destiny is with us. The door to one of the two protocol rooms is uh, open a little bit, because this is the place when a president, a prime minister, a foreign affairs minister is coming, where they have uh, a possibility to rest, to have small interviews or discussions to prepare the meetings with the president, the leaders of the political groups and the members of the European Parliament. The European Parliament is not only a place to discuss and adopt laws together with the Council of Ministers, it is as well a resonance board for other activities. Regularly hearings, workshops, conferences are taking place here. You don't find it on the web, the variety of these meetings. You find it only here behind glass where you see the posters of these conferences which go from banking to environment to water to culture to transsexuality to hypertension to jobs to arm trading and to the relationship to other parts in the world. This second largest meeting room in the European Parliament is the only one with a ghost, the ghost of Europe, because Valérie Giscard d'Estaing and some hundred other representatives of EU member states sat here to draft, to discuss and to draft the European Constitution, which has now become reality in the form of the Treaty of Lisbon. In the very beginning of the European Parliament, the chairs were like this, therefore I was the person who called it Mickey Mouse Bar. The name stayed, despite that now the chairs have changed into something much more dull. But nevertheless, an artist from Latvia made a painting with Mickey Mouse. Therefore, one of the meet preferred meeting places in the European Parliament, the Mickey Mouse Bar. When the European Parliament is in session in Brussels, there is sitting a guard leaving in only those who are member of parliament into the chamber 
But now the door is open, therefore let's have a look in the chamber ourselves. Besides the members of the European Parliament, there are seats reserved as well for the 27 commissioners and for the representatives of the country who has the presidency in the Council of Ministers. That means very often you see there the Prime Minister and the Foreign Affairs Minister of the country who is presiding the Council of Ministers sitting on the right under the seat number one and two. The podium in the middle is only used by heads of state, not even heads of government are allowed to speak from here. And the seat number 21 and 22 and those behind are reserved for the European commissioners, our executive body, our quasi-government of the European Union. In the back of the chamber are the galleries for the journalists, in the middle for the diplomats and on the very left for the general public. The MEPs are sitting not according to the nationality, but according to the political ideas. On the very left, number three, the leader of the communists, behind him the communist, the group is called GUE here. Then seat number five, the president of the socialist social democrats, behind him in alphabetical order the other members. Then here in the middle of the chamber, 10, 11, 12, 13, the leaders of uh, the Greens, the Liberals and the Christian Democrats, then the vice presidents of the Christian Democrat Party and under 19 and 20, those who are very critical to the European Union and in the case of representative number 20, who even would like to leave the European Union. Everything is translated into the 20 three languages, which are the official languages of the European Union, which is a wonderful thing, but it's terrible because sometimes those who are speaking are don't take into consideration that it's translated and they speak like they would speak in a national context, using words, using abbreviations or making jokes, which are very difficult to translate in the language, in the other languages. The meeting is shared either by the president or one of the vice presidents who has, it, who has a chair which is a little bit higher than the others. The acoustic, the acoustic, you hear it, is wonderful here in this room, but most people don't listen to the acoustic because they have earphones listening to the interpreters. When you're a member of the European Parliament, you have your earphone, you can choose between the different channels of uh, the language you would like to follow, and you have here a screen where it is indicated what is in the moment on the agenda and you can vote yes, no abstention on the three buttons here. European Union is not only European Parliament, it is as well the Commission where you see the main buildings now in front of you, including the Berlaymont where all the 27 commissioners are based. A new building is built. You see the cranes and you see the Council of Ministers with the black windows and the polished granite where the heads of state are meeting. It's a very small part of Brussels, but it's a place where the future of Europe is discussed and decided and where no one, no one can succeed who is fighting only for his own country. Those who take into consideration the interests of the neighboring countries are those who are successful because we are condemned of living together with the neighbors of the other 27 countries. And 28 years ago, I had the pleasure and honor of being elected myself to the European Parliament. Now I'm a former member of the European Parliament living here in this part of Brussels and being in deep appreciation and love to this idea to bring people together, living together in peace, in tolerance, but most importantly, in mutual respect, take into consideration the interests of the other countries around you and trying to be a model of living together in a sustainable way, respecting others, respecting the environment and respecting the whole of the globe. Thank you.